Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at something really special. Why is it special? It's special because it's the highest quality genome of an Anatolian Neolithic farmer from Barson. There is no Anatolian Neolithic farmer that I am aware of that has a higher quality genome than this individual. Uh, it's a woman, her mitochondrial lineage is K1A2. And in case you aren't familiar where Barson is located, I can show you here on Google Maps. This is where this genome is from. This is where the Anatolian Neolithic farmers from Barson are all from. Now let's go ahead and move on to her results with my trade predictor. We're going to start with Nashakot. Uh, this is what she scores with Nashakot. <coughs> She's scoring light brown uh, eye color as the largest category for eye color. Uh, so light brown, you can see for the reference, is kind of um, here on the on the screen. This might be the eye color she had. Uh, there's also a pretty significant likelihood of hazel eyes, but uh, and and dark brown as well. But probably she's got light brown eyes. For hair color, uh, she likely has black hair. Although it's also possible for her to have brown hair. So you can see, uh, I included a picture here that for reference, right? What kind of hair color counts as whatever category? So you can see the the one on the very right is the black hair. And the one to the left of, of it is the brown hair. So she likely has a hair color that's either black, as in the right, uh, the one on the right, or brown, as in the one uh, to the left of the one on the right. For skin color, her predicted skin color is that she has light or fair skin. Uh, very robust prediction. I mean, there's only 7% likelihood of intermediate or olive skin and 0% likelihood of dark or brown skin. So it's a very uh, kind of robust prediction of light skin for her. Uh, when it comes to hair texture, she's actually predicted to have curly or wavy hair. Uh, the likelihood of straight hair for her is kind of low, but it's also somewhat possible, I would say. Uh, and kinky hair is out of the picture. There is no way she had kinky hair. Let's go ahead and see what kind of uh, genotypes contributed to her score for phenotype. So it looks like she has blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, she has this genotype, which is usually predictive of heterozygous genotype and blue eye haplotype 1. She does not have blue eye haplotype 2. Um, and she actually has this genotype, which is typically predictive of having blue eye haplotype 2. So there's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a dislinkage happening here, uh, where she's got genotypes that typically don't go together. Uh, she does not have blue eye haplotype 3, and she does not have blue eye haplotype 4. So overall, having blue eye haplotype 1 it's kind of and, and this genotype together, it definitely contributed to her scoring light brown instead of dark brown eyes. Let's go ahead and see what she scores for the ethnic calculator portion. Uh, it looks like for the ethnic calculator, she's closest to Iron Age Anatolians, Assyrians, and Global or Amphora culture. And as you go further... Uh, there's Israelites, this Iranian individual. As you go further from this group, from this Eastern Mediterranean group, it gets, it gets, the distance gets further and further. Um, actually, New Grange 10, Neolithic farmer from Britain shows up here as well, which is very interesting. So, uh, as you can see, this ethnicity calculation was done with 615 SNPs. So it's a pretty high quality prediction. Uh, and it's basically all around very Mediterranean, very Mediterranean result. Let's go ahead and check her polygenic risk scores. So it looks like for the polygenic risk scores, she's got a very low score for schizophrenia. But I noticed it's a pattern where uh, Anatolian Neolithic farmers frequently get very, very low scores for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got average score for type 2 diabetes and she's got a very high score for Alzheimer's. So we have to definitely explore the Alzheimer's section of what contributed to this result. She's got a high score for multiple sclerosis. Once again, a two times the average score for that. Uh, for cancer section, looks like she's got two risk variants for breast cancer at a 24. It's not that much, to be honest. Two risk variants for breast cancer at a 24 is really not that bad. It's pretty average. Um, 10 risk variants for testicular cancer at a 24, once again, pretty average. For celiac disease, three risk variants for celiac disease out of 12, once again, pretty average. For GSS, zero risk variants out of 16, really good to see. And for Crohn's disease, six out of 28, which is... Uh, once again, pretty average. Nothing is too surprising about this result. So we really have to look out for Alzheimer's and, uh, and um, figure out why she's scoring the way she is. And we can figure it out right now. So it looks like she's got um, Vorior genotype in Compt and Vorior genotype in MAOA. So overall, she's probably a little bit um, intermediate between Vorior and Vorior. Uh, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, intermediate uh, levels of dopamine in the brain. It looks like she's got two derived no-go learner variants and DRG2's pro and pro variation, so uh, less dopamine D2 receptor sites. 
and she's got this genotype in DRD2, which leads to lower auto schizophrenia. And this is, by the way, a pretty rare genotype. Uh, the T allele here is pretty rare. It it is most common in Europeans, from what I remember, but it's just kind of unusual to see a TT genotype in this validation. So it th this is a part of the reason she's scoring so low for schizophrenia. Actually, these all contribute. Uh, it looks like she's got short form 5-HTTLPR and she does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. And she's got this genotype, which is actually kind of rare. I never talk about it, but the G allele here... Um, actually, no, is it the G or is it the A? I forget. Uh, one of these alleles, either the G or the A, causes a risk va is a risk variant for psychosis in this federation. It's super uncommon. So this might be a genotyping error. And by the way, this does not this does not play a part in the uh, risk score for schizophrenia. So it doesn't affect the score for that. But um, it's kind of interesting that she has this genotype. It's kind of uncommon. I'm not sure what ethnicity the risk allele here is most common for. She does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. By the way, something I just added here is you can actually see the location. You can check, you can click on this little button and it shows you the location of the uh, gene or the SNP. So in this case, uh, these are both in MCM6, so it's the same gene. That's why the location is like this. But for example, here, if we click on the button, we see it's going to be different for uh, for every gene, which is kind of interesting. I just added it uh, today. Okay, so for OXTR, it looks like she's got two variants for sociopathy. So she's got the sociopath gene in OXTR. It looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. We do want to see Alzheimer's though. So it looks like she's got two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. And this is one of the really important variations that like significantly raises uh, the risk score for Alzheimer's. So you can see the odds ratio for that is 12 to 61 times higher odds of Alzheimer's. It's no joke, guys. This is a very serious variation, a very serious genotype. Uh, so you were, if you were wondering why she's scoring what she is for Alzheimer's, it's mainly because of this. Uh, she's also got this genotype, which is, leads to slightly average or increased risk of Alzheimer's. And these don't really matter all that much, to be honest. APOE is by far the biggest contributor to Alzheimer's risk for multiple sclerosis. It looks like she's got this genotype, which um, leads to higher multiple sclerosis risk, which is kind of interesting. All of these variants are really uncommon. They're all very, uh, very uncommon. You don't see them very often. We're going to skip myopia. Uh, miscellaneous section looks like no micro P and no micro P here as well. Really good to see. These are not 1240K files, so I don't expect to see micro P here. Um, it seems to be a feature that you only find in 1240k files. Uh, I'm talking about the genotyping error that's very frequent there. It looks like she's got one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS9939609, higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea, uh, better for performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete, one variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCM9A. This is kind of uncommon. And when it comes to East Asian facial traits and East Asian genetic traits in general, she does not really have any East Asian genetic traits, does not have East Asian EDAR. Uh, neither of the two genotypes are East Asian in the EDAR, and she's also not an Asian flusher. We're going to skip drug response. Actually, uh, there might, might be something I can talk about here. It looks like uh, she's got TT here in Oct1, which leads to lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. So some people, when they smoke cannabis, they get... Um, you know, they get really freaked out. They start seeing stuff, hearing stuff, uh, believing stuff that's like completely crazy. And some people are just kind of chill and they tolerate it well. So in her case, she's probably the type to be chill and to tolerate it well. The allele that's um, that leads to lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, just for reference, it's most typical for Spanish people. Uh, it peaks in Spanish people in Europe. For albinism, she is a carrier of occutaneous albinism type 2 mutation. So, wow, that's interesting. I'm not sure how reliable that is. Uh, is she a carrier of anything else? Nope, she's not a carrier for anything else for albinism, and she has this genotype, which is to two times increased risk of cleft lip, and she's also not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variants. I don't even know what to put for, for the thumbnail. Is it to put for put Alzheimer's, or do I put albinism, albino, uh, albino sample? I don't know. I, I'm not sure if um, being a carrier, by the way, means you would express the actual phenotype. You might be a carrier without being albino. It looks like she's got two risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever, which is nowadays very common in Mediterraneans. And we're going to skip MTHFR for cancer section. Uh, nothing too interesting here. For leukemia section, pretty much average typical genotype. For rare diseases, um, is there anything that's interesting here? Nope, nothing too interesting here. And for celiac disease, um, nothing too interesting here. 
I'm gonna skip. Excuse me, I'm using a uh, unregistered version of Bandicam and it shuts down after 10 minutes of respo of uh, recording. So it looks like for Crohn's, um, she's got typical risk of cro for Crohn's disease, really good genotype. For Canavan syndrome, zero risk variance. For Canavan syndrome, really good to see. And for HIV and AIDS panel, this is something I wanted to see really good, really bad because um, these Anatolian Neolithic farmers from Barson, I noticed a trend that so many of them have this genotype, uh, which is protective against HIV spreading into AIDS, turning into AIDS. And it's really uncommon for Europeans nowadays. You don't see, you see maybe, maybe five or four percent of Europeans with this kind of genotype. For people outside of Europe, it pretty much doesn't occur. But even for Europeans, it's super uncommon. But among these Barson Neolithic farmers, it seems to be almost predominant. And it's kind of crazy. So yeah, it's interesting that she's got this gene type, which leads to 90% reduction in HIV viral load. And um, basically some protection against HIV virus. Well, that was good to see. That was um, that was um, Barson 4, Bar Barson 8, Bar 8. Thanks for watching the video until the end, and you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.